Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Pico Display Pack. So the Pico Display Hat is a vibrant 1.4 inch IPS LCD display for your Raspberry Pi Pico with four usable buttons and an RGB LED. So we've sourced a new LCD screen, especially for the Raspberry Pi Pico. We call it the Display Pack. It's a lovely, bright, 18-bit capable 240 by 135 pixel IPS display and fits perfectly on the Raspberry Pi Pico. We've surrounded it with four tactile buttons so you can easily interface your Pico with your human fingers and an RGB LED for notifications uh, and adding extra rainbows as well. So the Pico display will turn your Pico into a compact user interface device which is useful for larger projects capable of driving instructions, display readouts and even incorporating elaborate nested menus. If you'd rather use your Pico as a standalone device, you could even make a rotating slideshow of images, display beautiful graphs from your sensor data, and build your own Tamagotchi or matchbox size text adventure game. So Raspberry Pi Pico isn't included in the, uh, the pack, so you'll need to buy one of them, and we have loads available on the store. Your Pico will also need to have the male header pins like this one, rather than the ones that don't come with any header pins on them. And this means that we can attach the Pico display pack underneath. So let's take a look at some of the features. This is a 1.14 inch 240 by 135 pixel IPS LCD screen. It's got four tactile buttons, an RGB LED. It has pre-soldered female headers for attaching to the bottom of the Pico, and it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi Pico. It comes fully assembled, so there's no soldering required at all. And the dimensions are 53 by 25 by nine millimeters. And the usable screen area is 25 by 15 millimeters. There's also a schematic and C++ and Python libraries on the website as well. So getting started. So the labels on the underside of the Pico display will show you your way around how to plug it in. So the USB is the, the key there. If you just look for the USB and line that up with the, the USB connector on your Pico, it'll just plug in very simply. The easiest way to get started is by downloading our custom MicroPython UF2 for your Pico, which includes all the libraries that you'll need to get started. The beginner friendly tutorial as well is linked below on the store and it will show you how to get to grips with pirate based MicroPython. So getting started with the Raspberry Pi Pico and MicroPython examples and the MicroPython function reference are just available on the store if you're on the store page now. If not, just head over there. The version 1.18.2 of our MicroPython build includes fixes for long running memory related display bugs. So if you're running an older version, make sure you grab the latest version of that and flash it onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. And the Pico display also works nicely with the CircuitPython uh, and Adafruit's display IO library. So look for the display pack ST7789 example in the library, which is bundled to get started. So here's the, uh, the diagram, which shows you all the different pinouts, depending whether you're looking at the front or the back, it's obviously the reverse there. And the Pico display pack communicates with the LCD by SPI on pins LCD CS, LCD DC, the LCD S clock, and the LCD MOSI. We also use pulse width modulation on the BL enable pin with gamma correction for full linear backlight control. The LCD reset is also tied to the run pin on the Pico, so the LCD will start running whenever the Pico is reset. And there are four switches, which is switch A, switch B, switch X, and switch Y. And there are also onboard RGB LED, which is ideal as an indicator odds to bring some rainbows to your device. If you want to use the LED for something else, there's cuttable traces so you can cut them away on the underside of the board as well. The power is supplied by the three volts on the Pico, which means the display pack and the Pico can be powered via USB uh, and for external supplies from 1.8 to 5.5 volts, making it ideal for battery powered projects as well. So the Raspberry Pi Pico, if you want to grab one of them from the store, you can just head over there. These are quite available at the moment. So the Raspberry Pi Pico is a flexible, low cost development board for the folks at Raspberry Pi based on their very own chip, the RP2040. It's programmable over USB and you can use C++ or MicroPython and it's ideal for all kinds of physical computing projects, devices and innovations. So I'm really excited to see what you do with that. We've called our Pico size add-ons packs uh, and they're designed to attach to the back of the Pico uh, as if it's wearing like a stylish backpack or a miniature jetpack if you wish. And they were also got bases. So I've got a base here. Bases are where you plug a Raspberry Pi Pico 
onto the top of the PCB board. Uh, and that lets you do some interesting hackery, like uh, lots of things at once. You can plug in all kinds of different things, such as the uh, breakout gardens. But on this particular one, it's a pack, so it's attaching to the back of the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's have a look at a demo. So over here on the captain's table, I've got the Pico plugged into the Pico display pack, and let's run some of the example code. So I've downloaded from the PyMoroni GitHub repository the MicroPython code examples. So over here we have the basic QR code. Let's try that one. So what this is going to do is it's going to draw a QR code on the display. Uh, so let's just run this code and have a see what that looks like. So I can see there, there's a, the display. That little rainbow effect we're getting there is just because of my camera, it's not actually on the display itself. And if I take my phone and I hover that over there, it's just showing the QR code is linking to the Pimeroni website. Okay, let's run the next one. So let's run the demo one next. I quite like this one. So this one is just going to show loads of different sort of balls bouncing around the screen, uh, like those old DVD screensavers like they had on the, the office. Um, so that's quite a cute little uh, demo there. It uses quite a few different things there. So we've got the Pico display being brought in and we've got a little class of balls so we can model each of them. So just look how many are being modeled at the same time. There's quite a few on screen there. It's quite insane how many we can have actually running in that small amount of memory. Let's try the button one next. So I'm going to run that. So I think this actually might be upside down. So it says there, let's zoom in a little bit more. So it says press any button. So if I press button A, button A is pressed. If I press button B, button B is pressed. If I press button X, button X is pressed. And if I press button Y, button Y is pressed. So looks quite nice. That very, very clear to see. Let's run a rainbow one next. This is quite a funky one. So let's go to stop that and then run this code. So we can see now Pico Disco. Like I said, that sort of rainbow effect is just an, an artifact of the camera that I'm using. In real life, this looks really, really sharp and, and a solid color. You can't see that at all. In fact, it might be the overhead camera. Let's just, uh, might be the overhead light. If I dim the overhead lights, we can also see the RGB LED there is changing color at the same time as the screen is changing color. So it's currently got a green cast. It's going to a sort of cyan and then blue, and then it's going to go through the sort of purples, reds, and then oranges and yellows and back to green. Okay, let's just stop that. And you can see that it's really readable in full, full sun. And finally, we'll do the thermometer. So it's not actually this hot in here. I think the Pico runs a little bit hotter. I think it, it tends to say that it's about 24 degrees, 23 degrees. Uh, I think in reality, it's about 21 degrees, 20 degrees in here, according to my air conditioner. So I think the Pico just picks up a little bit higher than uh, reality. And that's because the chip itself is generating some heat as it's processing. We can see that we're running like a little bar chart. Uh, and as, as time ticks along, it's going to take a new reading and update that bar chart. So I just pull that off there and just show you what that look, actually looks like. It's really, really thin. Let's, let's back out a little bit and give you an idea of that. You can see there the connectors. There's the Pico and there's the actual Pico display. So I actually did a video on this on my own YouTube channel uh, and I've created a Pico Tamachibi, which is a bit like a Tamagotchi uh, and it's virtual pet. This was using a black and white screen that's got a yellow and blue filter over it. So it makes it look like it's actually a color screen. And what I did with this was animated some little sprites on the screen. So what I did there was just make a little character animate depending on uh, which option from the top of the screen. So it's really fun sort of designing all the little icons for that. So if you want to check that out, go to youtube.com slash kevinmacalier28 and you can find all my good stuff there. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.